We just went through step by step on how we made this outdoor series. And stay tuned to the end because one lucky viewer is going to win one. What is up? A welcome back. Do you like to do it, build it, or make it? So do we. We have a new video each week. This week, we're taking it outdoors. That's right, we're working on an outdoor sign series. If you've been following us in Test Cut Tuesdays, we've been doing a couple of outdoorsy signs. It's something new we wanted to add to our product line. So a couple of Tuesdays ago, we did a fisherman sign. This past Tuesday, we did a hunting sign. And now we have three more to kind of complete the series for now. One of them is a lake sign with a canoe and a little camp, little pop-up camper. Ten. One is a mountain biking sign, which Garrett wasn't gonna let this outdoor series go without some sort of a bike sign. And then the last one is kind of a s'mores camping outdoor sign that'd be great for any kind of Something outdoor for your deck. Little, little campsite. Yeah. 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 And we're gonna show you from beginning to end how we make our door signs. We're gonna start in Canva and finish with a ribbon. And Stay tuned to the end because we're gonna give away one of the five. We're gonna select a random comment. We'll want you to choose which one you like best. We're gonna select a random comment. We're gonna choose that person to pick which sign they want out of the five, and we're gonna ship it to you. Step one, we're gonna create our cut file. We use Adobe Illustrator to create our SVGs that we use in our files. We start in Canva, we grab a lot of images from Canva. If you're new to creating your own SVGs, that is a great place to start. We import those files or graphics files, clip art, into Adobe Illustrator, and then we create our design. We merge, we cut, we crop, we create the 3D layers. We put all of that together and we create the SVG that we use as our cut file. Now, if you are new to creating SVGs, don't know how to create SVGs, don't worry, we've got you. We offer those SVGs in our store at kngmakeit.com. We have hundreds of cut files up there, so you're bound to find something. Next, we're gonna import our SVG into our laser software. Our SVGs work with any laser software. It works with Lightburn and Xtool Creative Space. Step two, we're gonna gather all of our supplies. We needed some quarter inch MDF. We're gonna use this high quality cabinet grade MDF. You see that it's light in color because this cuts better, it's less smoky and has less char. I like this over plywood too because I don't hit knots and I don't hit glue spots. I have a consistent, predictable cut each and every time. And we're gonna seal that MDF with this exterior house paint. So we use exterior house paint because it has all of those additives in it that make it water resistant, mildew resistant, UV properties so that they don't fade, it's UV resistant. And then we also use this Starbond thick glue. This glue is the best glue that we found to adhere MDF to MDF. Uh, it doesn't work as well for really rough woods, thick grains and things like that, but it works beautifully on this MDF. It does weather well, whether it's in cold, heat, we found it's the best glue for our signs. And it's the thick stuff, so it'll actually fill little gaps. I can just edit that out. Step three, we're gonna make all of our cuts. We get our MDF in four by eight sheets. We cut it down using the panel saw, so it'll fit inside of our lasers. We offer this same MDF in multiple laser ready sizes. Again, check it out at kngmakeit.com. Right. Are we just gonna load it up and make our cuts? Now we paint, but uh, not with the paintbrushes. We're gonna use these foam rollers. I thought I would take you through the whole process of how we do this at the workshops. So we're gonna do it step by step and I'll show you all the tips and tricks that we use. 
all the tips and tricks. Well, maybe not every tip and trick on this particular project, but we're getting there. So when we cut out our pieces on the laser, I put like a frame around everything. Everything gets a frame so that all of our pieces will stay together. I tape them off and I remove everything with the frame. I set my files up like that too. So if you have one of our files and you don't understand why there's a box around everything, this is why I tape everything off so I can remove it easily. And this is mostly for shipping purposes for us so that we can ship everything and we don't lose little pieces in the shipping and process. That's right, they don't break. We don't have little corners that get crunched in the shipping box. Everything stays together with this nice little frame around it. For you, if you're using one of our SVGs, you might want to keep the frame because then that gives you a nice clear cutoff and you can use the rest of the board for something else. If you don't want the frame, you can just delete it. It's not a big deal. We're going to remove all of the tape, but I'm not going to throw this tape away. I'm going to use this tape to make a little tape palette where I'll be able to put all of my little pieces on so when I'm painting them, I don't have to chase them around the table. There's a little tip for uh, your painting the small pieces, just like he said. You're gonna put that tape face up and then you're gonna tape it down on either end. You can put the small pieces and like he said, when you roll it, they don't get stuck to the roller, they don't move while you're rolling. It's a good way to keep everything nice and still. And if you're buying a kit already cut from us, comes with the tape already on it. <laughs> comes with the tape. So we're just going to use the tape and help separate all of our colors. Yeah, the first thing our... we're going to do is paint the backer, but before we do that, we're going to go ahead and pull all the pieces out and start grouping them by color and putting them on our little tape palettes. This one that we're doing is going to be the mountain bike sign. So you can watch us paint it fast in uh this one what is, is it just for me this yes. one was all about me <laughs> See, yeah this is something we've been learning you know you live and learn you get better um, one of the things we found is we, with the 3D layers, the signs sometimes get heavy. And what he's doing now is anywhere that there's like uh, multiple layers, he's trying to save space, cut space. We cut things out of there. T save the weight by taking the insides out. So we, yeah, we cut welcome out of there. And then I put some tabs in there so we can break this piece out. No longer needed. Save some weight on the actual sign itself. And then this is going to give you the next layer and still look solid, but you don't have all that extra weight in the back. So that's cool. Good job. Thanks. I like that. The first step in painting these projects would be to start with the backer. The backer is the largest piece. It's gonna have the most area. The backer is the bottom layer that all the pieces sit on top of. So we're gonna do that first because that's gonna be a, a larger space to dry. And then we're gonna put a second coat on that. So we're gonna put the first coat on our backer. We're gonna use these foam rollers. We reuse our rollers. They last for a couple of weeks in these baggies. We just pop them up so that the little hole is sitting on top. And then we put our handle in there. Now you don't want to try and push down like this. You're not going to have enough leverage. It's not going to be close enough. So I just do a little tap on top, take it out of the bag. You don't even have to touch it. And then we're going to put a little paint on our paper plate. We use these paper plates because we can throw them away at the workshops. Um, and it's just easier, a lot faster than cleaning out paint trays. So I'm gonna put a little paint on the top of my plate. Notice here that I didn't put the paint right in the middle of the plate. I put it right here at the top of the plate. That's because these look a little nicer if you can keep the edges clean uh, and leave those dark edges. Don't worry, you're gonna get some paint on the edges. We always do. We use these paint markers at the end to clean them up and I'll show you those. But for the, the paint on your roller, these already have some paint in them, so they don't need a ton of paint. You don't need to slosh it down right in the middle. So I'm gonna pick up a little paint from the edge and get it on my roller. Now here you can see that there's, here, let me just 
do an excessive. Oh, there you yeah, go. Yeah, I did excessive. So here you can see there's a ton of paint on this roller, and if I start painting with this roller right here, the paint is going to ooze everywhere and it's going to drip over the sides of your pieces. So you want to roll that off on your plate like this until you can't see any more paint blobs. I don't know. Thick clumps of paint. You want to be able to see the sponge through the paint again. That's right. You should just see the sponge again with the color on the sponge. If you can't see the holes in the sponge, then you've got too much yeah, paint too on much it. Paint. All right, and then we're going to start painting our backer and Garrett's going to start painting some of the smaller pieces. Now, I told you all that for mostly the big, the tiny little pieces. For the large size backers, you can get a little more paint on your roller because you've got a lot of area to cover here. Now, when I'm doing the tiny pieces, I'm trying to keep these edges looking nice and crisp and black. So I'm not putting any pressure. I'm just kind of letting the roller ride on the top not really pushing at all. I do have to go back and forth several times, but I can keep my edges nice and black. You can see here, I just added paint straight to my backer. You can do that, but you've got to be careful not to add too much. Otherwise, you're going to have too thick of a coat and it's going to look sloppy. You'll get those bubbly textured look to it. Which, to be honest, I think I've got too much paint on it now. Oh, look at that. It's Tried to pull a pro move. <laughs> I wasn't ready. You can't be me, Kim. You can't be me. <laughs> this is normally your move. Wanna be like G. That's okay. If you get too much, roll off your roller onto a paper plate. That'll take some of that excess paint off <clears throat> until you can get it to a manageable level. And remember, when you do your backer, you're not gonna have it looking perfect on that first coat. You just wanna cover it with paint and let it dry. It's gonna look blotchy, it's, not, it's gonna look spotty, it's not gonna have a clean, perfect finish, and that's okay. You're really just trying to get that first coat. That second coat will give you that clean look. It'll give you that even look. It'll really even out. Yes. Cover those patchy yes. areas. Really help you with that comb over. Step five, we're gonna bring it all together with a little bit of the Starbond Thick. It's a gap filler. So even though if it won't touch each other, it'll still fill in and, and hold tight. We get a lot of questions about this glue. Will it hold up outside? And from my experience, it absolutely will. It is the best glue that we have found to glue these MDF pieces together. It does a great job of sticking these things together. You can leave your signs outdoors for the winter, summer, in the heat, in the rain. We've had signs that have sat in the rain and uh, completely been waterlogged, but the pieces are still stuck together. So it is a great glue for this kind of project. My favorite part of this glue is it's dried in 30 seconds. Yes. I'm ready to manhandle that thing within a minute. Yes, and you can find it in our store at kngmega.com. We're gonna start building our sign or putting it together from the bottom up. We're gonna start from the backer and work our way up, and then from the bottom and work our way to the top. Oh, I took your glue. You want a different glue? Hold on. Oh, he's boosting the lofty three. Mm. Now you guys are getting a good look at Garrett's childhood classroom activities. It was usually erasers. Comes okay. in with a manual. Right into a hard whip. Ooh.
<clears throat> All right, you ready? I'm ready. Man, that edge looks great. Those pens do a great job of cleaning up the edges, making yes. it look black again if you go over the edge a little bit. Yep, you can find these in our Amazon store. All these links that I keep talking about will be down below. Uh, but you can find these Sharpie markers in our Amazon store. Look at this thing. Yeah, look how that pops. I That is just perfect for you. Any mountain biker, I think, would appreciate that. Put that oh, in, yeah. man, in their main I cave. Mean, he came out better than I thought he would. <laughs> <laughs> I am pleasantly surprised. Yeah, Kim thought the uh, chain might be, might be a little too much around the welcome, but I think it's just enough. Yeah. Oh like a little bike chain around the outside. If you I like all tell. the colors too. I like the different shades of blue. That's what I was getting to this say. This came out great. This is a guy sign all day, every mm -hmm. day, because it's six shades of blue. Six shades of blue. <laughs> That's a new movie. <laughs> Like I'm at the lake. Oh my gosh, you did look at this little fire and the logs. You you made so many cute things on this one. I'm I totally love this one. jump in that canoe. Right? Come on, Kim, you're paddling. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> yeah, I totally feel like you can look right in. It's totally 3D. I love it. I love it. Logs look so cute. <laughs> All right, and number three, look at that. Uh, I still think the mountain bike one is my favorite. Now don't get me wrong, these marshmallows are looking scrumptious. <laughs> looking like you're about ready to put them right over the campfire. Let me see, let me see, let me see. Yes, I love it. I love the little pop tent, I love the fire and those cute little logs, the detail. I don't know if you can see the real detail in those logs. So cute, so cute. Step six, and now we have the accents. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna add some something to hang this with. I think I'm gonna use some cotton cord or macrame cord for this guy. And Kim's aching to add a bow. <laughs> to some of these. Yes, these look so great. Look at, at they just all three of them look amazing. I love them. I'm so impressed with them. And I know they need a hanger. They have to, these are door rounds. We can change these and make these like table standers and swap out some of the words. But for these, they're actual door hangers. So I've got to put something on them. Now, Garrett and I have already had um, a little, what? Friendly banter, yeah. chatter, chatter, negotiation. Yeah, negotiation. I, I think that it needs a bow. Do you no think bow. it needs a bow? No, these do Just not like, need no, bows. These outdoor ones do not need bows. They do not need bows. No, <laughs> get that off. So I think a bow might ruin these. Look, how cute is that campfire with no, a bow? It does not need a bow. This lake perfect with a bow? bow Maybe no the bow. lake. Maybe, oh, your hair, yes. <laughs> yes, your hair, no on the signs. Can you see, you wanna see? Yep. It's a very neutral bow. I see this. But I have, you know what else? I have ribbon that have fish on them. It's a whole outdoors thing. I don't so, know. Uh, all right. What's your bow? Do you want us to see some bows on these? Well, if I can't do a bow, I do have some other options. Do I just simply add? Yeah, like a colorful uh, hanger. A Maybe wire a little, ribbon hanger. A little hanger. Like colorful, I said. like I've got this one. Look, this is so outdoorsy. That this one is might perfect. work really well with this one. Okay. Because I feel like, yeah, it gives it that outdoor. We always get, get asked how long do we make this? I usually make them about the width of the sign for our normal door rounds, but these I can see are kind of close. Yeah, so these are a little bit closer. I'm just gonna keep it about that same width and if, I, if well, it's too long, I'll snip it off. Yeah, well, what happens is you just poke it through these holes and tie a knot. So if it's too long, 
you just pull it through a little bit more. So easy. Tie the knot down a little lower. All right, let's lay it down. I don't know. Uh, what are you doing? To, just trying to keep it so you can see it on camera. Well, I I would love to show them on camera, but well, honestly. Grab this other camera then. Oh, you know what? I will just use my phone. How about that? Got a camera in my pocket. All right. Go. Okay. I have pushed it through and I'm just going to tie a little knot in the back. Simple like that. Mm -hmm. Then for the other end, I'm just going to fold this up. I usually like. Give it a tri-fold. Yep. And maybe even a little smaller Ooh, for this guy. Tri-fold with a double in the middle. And the great thing is this, all of this ribbon has wire in it. So I'm just going to shove it through. I can grab it. Make sure I have enough here at the top. I did make these holes a little bit smaller. I don't know if you've noticed. I did notice. But I made them a little bit smaller because I didn't think we'd be using like colorful ribbons. I thought we'd be keeping with some kind of rope. So this one has this like a little outdoorsy thing. What do you think? I like it. I like it. I think that's all it needs. I don't think it needs a ribbon. I knew you were going to try it one more time. You know, Go ahead, it try it out. <laughs> I don't. I don't think it needs a bow. All right, so what about for, okay. Well, this guy, I had some rope, but I lost Here. it. Oh, there it Here is. Here Where do you think I should put the knot? On the right. inside or the back side? Yeah, I was gonna ask you. So you get your choice. You can hang it with a knot behind here so you can't see it, like this one, where the knots are in the back. Mm -hmm. Or you can accent it and put the knot in the front. I think we could put the knots in the front and they might look like clouds. <laughs> okay. Might continue that cloud look. All right, so from this one, I'm going to push up from the back. So. Okay. Whoa, whoa. There we go. Yeah, all right. See, I like it with the string. I like, I like the knots on the outside on this one, too. It's like I'm not trying to hide anything. Just out there in the open. <laughs> All right, campfire. Yeah, that's I like good. it. I like yeah. the zigzag. Keeps it fun. Keeps it. Keeps it fun. Looks like something I would see at a campsite. Probably on somebody's RV door. Yes, and because we painted this with exterior house paint. You can keep it out there for a while. It can get a little wet. I mean, if you keep it out there all day, every day in straight weather. All day, every day. It's not gonna last as long, no. but think like uh, your and picnic if, table. Yeah. It'll stay out there for a couple of years. I know I've had mine out there for a couple of years. And while the edges may swell a little, the pieces do not come off and the paint truly does seal the front. And if you're worried about it, we don't really seal our backs, but you could paint this with a coat of exterior house paint and seal the back too. Well, or spray I mean, it. My top tip, don't put it in a monsoon. Top tip. Top tip, no <laughs> monsoons. What do you think? Which one is your favorite? I Hi. love them. This is the first time we've really done an outdoor series. We pumped out these five over the last couple of weeks. We'll definitely add more to them because I really love making them. I think they're so cool. So we're gonna add more. Leave us a comment down below and vote for your favorite. As we said earlier, we're gonna pick one random comment and give one of these away. So put your comment down below. Tell me which one you like better, the most. The and most. Then, <laughs> and maybe just let me know if there's another type of outdoor sign that you'd like to see. We're happy to make more and add to this collection. Yeah, I wanna see this collection grow. This is right up my alley. A big thanks to all of our patrons. One of these guys over here will be getting a free gift this week also. And did you know that we have a Kim and Garrett After Dark podcast as well as some free files and a Zoom call? Yes, the best way to support this channel is through Patreon.com. It's a way to support creators. We have an account over on Patreon.com. We offer multiple levels of subscription. $5, you buy us a couple cups 
cup of coffee every month, uh, $10, we give you a free file every month, but the top tier, the $20 tier, gets you all of our benefits. It gets shebang. you a free t-shirt, all of our files, also gives you the access to the uh, outtakes and monthly zoom calls yes monthly zoom calls Some weekly after show. classes <laughs> yeah we have a little bit of everything over there so we are about out of time i have to go do something outdoors i'm really feeling it right now <laughs> you have to go do something outdoors and we will see you next week where we'll do it build it and make it again oh and don't forget to join us on tuesday for some test cut Tuesday, we usually cut That's something like this. That's where we like did this. the fish and, and the, the hunting, hunting sign. Yeah, we usually cut something and see if it actually fits together and see what it looks like as first a real try. sign. First, first try. try. <laughs> first, first tea Tuesdays. Oh, this one's going to